I'm Alina Mitchell, the Learning Experience Specialist for the Jacobs Institute for Innovation and Education at the University of San Diego. We have our Executive Director, Lisa Dolly, on, the, on our webinar today. Lisa, do you want to say hi to everyone? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I'd like to welcome you to our Ed Innovation web, web, ex, excuse me, Webinar um, Expert Series with Dr. Daryl Adams. He is one of our dynamic instructors for the Professional Learning Certificate, and we really appreciate you all for joining us today. Um, his course is six weeks, and it's entitled Educational Leadership and Innovation for the 21st Century, which is very relevant. And his course will begin on May 18th. So we're happy to have you with us today, Daryl. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Wonderful. Well, before Dr. Adams begins his presentation, I'd like to share some background information about the certificate itself. The program was designed for professionals who are interested in the emerging field of ed innovation and the career opportunities within this space. Uh, within our research, we've identified three target areas, uh, including learning experience or LX design and emerging technology, educational innovation, leadership, and entrepreneurship. So within the certificate program, you can choose to focus on one of these three areas, or you could take courses across all three. I'm gonna post in a moment the direct link to our certificate program so that you can view it. And again, we are so happy to have Dr. Daryl Adams with us, who is going to introduce himself and give you a course preview followed by question and answers. So thank you, and I'll turn it over to you, Daryl. Thank you, thank you, and welcome, everyone. I have a special introduction, and here it goes. Daryl, we're having some trouble hearing the video. Can you? Um, oh, hold on. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back here. We can't hear the videos, and it's very important to hear the video. So let me check that one one minute here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Um, when and, you play a video from a slideshow mm -hmm. online, only you're hearing the video on your computer, unfortunately. Um, okay. Aline, I do believe in Zoom there's a feature to share video so everyone can hear, and we may want to look at that for the future. Um, but I don't know that getting it set up right now is going to be the easiest thing. Uh, let me try this again. Unless, unless you can get your microphone really close to your um, speakers, Daryl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may mm -hmm. want to try that, but otherwise we won't be able to hear it just by playing it. How about now? No? No. Uh -uh. no. Okay. All right. You can hear me though. Uh, gosh, and a big part of my presentation is music. Let me, let me do one little quick adjustment here and see if this will work. And I'll just come out of my speaker. It sounds won't be as good, but it will be. Let's see here. Uh, I'll put internal speakers. I'm gonna turn my fan off and see if this will work. All right, let's go back to play. And let me go back here. And let's try the president again. Hey, that's working. We can hear. Okay. Unified School District in California. Where is he? There you go. Good to see you. One of the poorest school districts in the country. And a few years ago, Coachella started. That's me with the iPad. You didn't take that from a student. Yes, I did. <laughs> They, they, they paid for it through a bond measure, which voters overwhelmingly approved. So the whole community is committed to their children's education. Many students still don't have internet access at home, but the, the district found a solution for that too. I like They're this guy here. Watch him. On school buses and parking them across the district yes. every night. <laughs> it's really smart. Right? So you got underutilized resources, the buses as you can be, they put the routers on, disperse them, and suddenly, Everybody's connected. Well, thank you, President Obama. You guys hear me good now? Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm going to try one more thing. I do have a small speaker that I hook up Bluetooth-wise, and it should, it is hooked up. I'm just going to change my sound here real quick. 
and see if that works. All right, because this slide has music and that's very important to me. All right, we'll go back to my screen share and Oh, yeah. Did you hear that? Can you hear it? All right. That's how it finishes it starts. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Daryl Adams coming to you live from Rancho Cucamonga, California. And then right now, I just want to offer a welcome to everyone to join the Education Nation and join this class that I'm going to be presenting called Innovation in Education. And that's very, very important now considering what we're all dealing with uh, in today's society. So this music that you're hearing right now is going to be on my album coming up, and that's going to be an innovative album focused focus on helping to bring more love and kindness and togetherness and collaboration and leadership to the world. So look forward to that. And this class is going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be something that I hope that you will enjoy participating in. So that's how we're going to start it out, Educational Leadership and Innovation for the 21st Century. All right, enough of that. The next slide is about me a little bit to share with you who I am and where I've come from. Of course, I was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee, but I've been in California the last 30 plus years. So I'm sort of adopting both states in a way. Uh, I'm a former school superintendent and a former high school principal, uh, but I am a perpetual teacher and learner. Right now, I'm uh, also uh, allowed because I'm retired from superintendency to uh, really uh, focus on my true passions, teaching and learning, but also being a musician, singer, songwriter, rapper, and entertainer. So I believe education should be entertaining as opposed, as opposed to just being, you know, and just spitting on information. So I've been fortunate enough to be involved in some great innovations in our systems of education, not only in our state, but in our country and around the world. One of them was the Wi-Fi on Wheels program, which we were the first school district to put Wi-Fi routers on buses so we could connect kids not only going to and from school, but also in a neighborhood where there was no connection. We are also were the first to provide an iPad for every student, preschool to high school, all 20 plus thousand. And that was based on the community willing to tax themselves to do it because of course, the government is not providing that as they should. Instead, we are still spending money on textbooks, static textbooks, and it's time to change and innovate through that. So I was fortunate enough to be one of the top uh, innovators uh, in the nation as uh, the, the uh, uh, Obama administration looked to those who were doing things that were different, helping to change and focus on um, different ways to educate students. I was fortunate enough to be a superintendent of your finalist for the National Association of School Superintendents and a Colson top 25 innovator that has changed education the last 25 years. And that was basically because of my wife on wheels program, which was really uh, one of a kind. And I'm so happy to see more people doing that now, but this was all because of an innovative spirit that we brought to the school district, my former school district, Coachella Valley Unified School District. So, and that's what I wanna to bring to this class. So right now though, a little bit about what I'm doing now, I'm doing superintendent search firms, looking for innovative leaders to bring to school districts around the country, specifically in Southern California and throughout California, but also happy to be a learning specialist, now instructor with the Jacobs Institute for Innovation and Education at the University of San Diego, which I think is a great opportunity to help continue to help uh, you know, those of us who are still reaching and finding ways to help make change in their communities. And I think innovative leadership is a big part of that. I'm also uh, now the CEO of my own record company and multimedia company, Edutainment Records and Multimedia. We are going to be focusing on putting out music and entertaining, entertaining type of media to help, you know, just enliven people, bring their joy back, help people to, you know, just unify again and really be enthusiastic about you know, what we all can do together. And it's needed now more than ever. So a question for our participants. Think about this for a second. What are your who, what, when, where, and how, and, and why of what you're doing? Because that is what has guided me my entire um, uh, career in education and in life. You know, why am I here? What is my, what is my purpose? Think about that for a second. And, and, and we're going to explore that some more, and we're going to explore that in the class. You know, whether you're a principal or a teacher or a business leader or an entrepreneur or a startup, you start your own company, why are you doing it? Who are you doing it for? When are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? And so I'm going to help you bring that out and uh, throughout this class, we're going to have lots of discussions about that, and I'm going to bring you a lot of material and case studies around successful people who are doing it, and also share my own experiences. So the picture you're seeing right now goes to my why. 
It's Coachella Valley Unified School District, one of the poorest in the nation. And I was so fortunate enough to be able to work for that community as a servant leader, as an innovative leader. This is what I saw when I first drove into that community. Trailer home parks, uh, abandoned uh, buildings where actually people were living. Uh, students who, <laughs> beautiful kids, who were still finding a way to have fun in some of the most dire conditions. And of course, as I said, it's very, very hot out there. But these are some of the homes that uh, the people lived in. And what, you know, it's a small middle class community out there, but there's a lot of low socioeconomic uh, community members out there, as well as some undocumented uh, community members. But that region is so important to agriculture here in Southern California and throughout the world. And so the, the students there, the parents there, the teachers, everyone, all the educators were really uh, dedicated to making a change and making a difference in the lives of these students. So I want to share with you a video of uh, and said, help to encapsulate my why of what why I'm an innovative leader and why I want to continue to help share that and how it's important that all of us um, have that at our forefront when we're doing what we do. We want to stay here. We need to stay here because the job that we have, that these people that live here um, need this place. They are families and good friends. And I see the children when they, they go outside to, to play. We get along, along with everybody. Uh, that's why we, we need this place that make better. Every year, thousands flock to the Coachella Valley for its music festival. Just down the road is Shady Lane, where 40 families face unlivable conditions. These farm workers work long hours at low wages to keep our food cheap. The trailers at Shady Lane are crowded. Families often share one room. Water, sewage, and power systems are in disrepair. And with temperatures regularly exceeding 110 degrees, air conditioning is not a luxury, but a basic requirement for health. Lo, la luz es lo, es lo más indispensable ahorita porque como tres y media empieza a subir 104, 105, 106, 108, 109 y, el, y la luz ahí, el, el aire, lo único que va a hacer va a ser eso, va a ser así la... y ya baja y empieza a botar puro, puro viento y lo que pasa ya el termostato ya no está prendido. We couldn't keep a fan even going. We knew the electricity was going to go out, so we, we didn't even bother trying to turn on ACs or anything. We would just all sleep in the living room, just wait, like, just wait until the power was off, because that, that, that would happen every single night. And if it didn't, it was a miracle. There, when we did it, it was a miracle. I'm going to move on from that. And here's a picture of me trying to go out uh, and work with my parents. I call it the uh, uh, walk, in my, walk in Their Shoes program. And I went out into the fields to help, um, you know, collect and uh, get the grapes from the grapevines. And of course, I was terrible at it. I was cutting up my hands, dropping grapes. And this, uh, everybody had fun with it, though. And all the parents were just concerned that they didn't, re they'd say, our superintendent cares. He's out there with us. And they understood. And this is one of my most proudest pictures of all. And those are the parents who work in those fields every day. And, you know, one of the things they told me is that we, we don't want our students working in this field, our, our children working in these fields, fields as they only uh, resort to having life. We want them to own it, to be a part of the American dream. And so my why was just like, it just overwhelmed me every day and it still does to this day. And I know there's leaders uh, uh, like that all around the world and like you that are, that are tuning in today. And that's why this class is gonna be uh, exciting in a way to, um, to help you uh, have a picture like this in the, you know, some of you are already doing it, but we want to do it even more. And that's one of the, the things that I focus on. So my question uh, to you today is, you know, seeing what you've seen so far, what, what attributes and characteristics does a 21st century innovative leader need to possess? And I apologize for that misspelling, it's posse, but it's possess, it should be the word. What, what should we, uh, what, what type of uh, ideas was we, was, uh, must we have? What type of leadership styles must, what must we incorporate? Because innovative leadership is not just being innovative. It really depends a lot on servant leadership, which I 
truly, truly um, use in my daily um, leadership uh, responsibilities and in my life. So think about that. What attributes and characteristics you're going to learn about those in this class. You're going to learn about people who are doing it, who tried to do it, who are still doing it, and who have been successful in it. And a lot of great case studies I'm going to bring forward to you. So for me, leadership is vision. And most importantly, leadership is vision with daring. Are you willing to take risks? Are you willing to take that step forward? We're going to talk about thinking outside the box. There is no box. We're going to talk about how we never take no for an answer. And we're going to, dis we're going to have great projects for you to bring forward. And I'm going to offer you some as well to help um, you know, work together to, to show how we can be different and unique and innovative in how we approach not only learning, but life. And whether you're starting, a, again, a startup or a educational organization or a church organization, whatever, how can we continue to make it better? I call it the building the better mousetrap theory. And we're not going to kill the mouse. We're just going to trap them and put them safely somewhere <laughs> so for the PETA members out there. But if, I want to be able to always offer a different way to do things, a better way of doing things, because that makes it exciting. That makes it fun. So uh, in this class, you're going to get a lot of that. One of my heroes is Steve Jobs. And he says, innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. That is so true. And I've seen that in my, uh, my time as a superintendent, as a school leader, as a high school principal. I always was wondering, how did Steve Jobs come up with this idea for the, for the iPod, iPod? Remember, how, how you get all these songs on this little device? And then even having the, 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 uh, the idea to bring forward a personal computer for everybody uh, to have in their own home when computers used to be the size of this room. So that type of innovative spirit, we wanna uh, look at that case study and study it and learn from him and maybe incorporate some of those into what we do because I did that a lot. And of course we use a lot of Apple products because I believe Apple makes the best devices. And um, the iPad initiative in my district was based on the fact that we wanted to make sure students had the best device available. And I know Chromebooks are popular now, whatever it takes to get kids connected, I'm good with that. But um, we, we were always wanting to seek to make a better uh, opportunity in bringing tools forward for the teachers to use in the classroom. Okay, another one of my heroes, let's see here. The slides that wasn't want to move, it's frozen now. Oh, there we go. Uh, John, John C. Maxwell, some of you may have known about John. He said, the single biggest way to impact an organization is to focus on leadership development. There's almost no limit to the potential of an organization that recruits good people, raises them up as leaders and continually develops them. And I think that's why we've been successful uh, in, in my former school district because we brought in leaders who were, who were interested in becoming better and looking, and I always recruited people, even now as I recruit superintendents, are the, is this person willing to be a continual perpetual teacher and learner? And so I think that's very important as well. Albert Einstein said, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. And so you've heard that before, I'm sure. And I definitely uh, believe in that as well. And sometimes we say, oh, we got as good. Our kids, 80% of our kids are graduating. We want 100% of the kids graduating ready for college career and citizenship, not just 80%. You know, I'm sure doctors would have found a better way to, 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 to do surgery. And of course, during this COVID uh, crisis we're going, we're going to find a way. We don't want to lose another life if we can. So the doctors are out there seeking innovative ways, nurses, healthcare professionals, everyone to find a way to solve this problem. And so that's the kind of spirit I'm going to take forward for this class. John Quincy Adams, uh, if your action inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, then you are a leader. We want to uh, follow some of his teachings as well. Peter Singe says, do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. People ask me all the time, how are you going to get 20,000 iPads for these kids? We don't have money for that. Well, we took a different path and we found a way to do it. We combined everyone's resources together and we did it. And we became an example for others to follow. With challenge, this is one of my own. With challenge comes the opportunity, the opportunity to be kind, to show love, and to collaborate. I'm going to talk about that in the class. And, my, and the 11 things of servant leadership, I think is very, very important. If you're going to be an innovative leader, you must be a servant leader. All right. And my final one, conceive, believe, act, and you will achieve. That works every time. Ideate, think about it, believe in what you're doing, take action, and I guarantee you, nine times out of 10, no, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you're going to be successful. All right, so the class is Educational Leadership and Innovation for the 21st Century. I, um, I'm looking forward to having you participate in the class. 
Uh, we're going to delve into what, how we can help prepare students for college career and citizenship if you're an educational leader, or how to make your business competitive in this digital world. You know, and there's a lot of opportunities out there, but also there's a lot of um, uh, challenges. And so we're going to look and work together on finding ways to do things. And I want the craziest ideas you have, the most unique ideas you have, the most groundbreaking ideas you have, bring them forward and let them be a part of your, your class pro uh, individual project. I'm gonna talk about my project. I'm gonna do a project too with you. And it's called Informing and Transforming Education Before, During, and After the COVID-19 uh, Pandemic. I'm gonna to put together a plan with your help to help we, to disperse out to the world on how we can bring schools back online, in line, whatever we need to do to make sure students are learning, whether that's in school, out of school, online, we can do this and find a way to come up with innovative ideas to transform education. Because now it's needed more than ever. Who knows what's gonna happen in August and September? We don't know. So let's start putting together, let's work together and put together a plan, a 10 point plan, a 20 point plan to help people and get that information out. Maybe collating some of the different strategic plans that people are putting together and come up with our own ideas. Let's do something that's actionable and that's gonna be fun. All right, my project, I'm sharing this with the world, I'm sharing it with you now. I'm uh, producing an album, video, performing entertainment project. And it's called Musical Prescriptions to Soothe the Coming Soul. And what I wanna do is take the arts and show the creativity and innovation around the arts and help transform the human condition. We're gonna to put together a rock and roll, hip hop and soul vision performing arts entertainment project the world has never seen. So think Hamilton on steroids, <laughs> think Mick James, think Prince, think um, Beethoven. We're gonna put all that together with some of the great uh, performing arts and and, and um, uh, musical plays, and I'm gonna just, I wanna just make it something really special. So I wanna get some ideas from the class as I innovate through this uh, and work with you on it as well, make it exciting. So anyway, the course is, is, is we have uh, several ways to present the course. Acris, acrisen, acr, how do you say that? <laughs> synchronous and asynchronous uh, <laughs> presentation. It's gonna be online for the most part. We did have a, a classroom, um, Pro, uh, format, but we're going to um, put that on hold for now because of the COVID-19 situation. But we're definitely going to be coming to you live once a week, and then you can do it at your own time as well. And this is the very uh, important thing. There's no textbook requirement, so you don't have to spend any money for this class. All right, who should attend? We want people who are uh, business leaders, school leaders, nonprofit, for-profit, technology, education, college students, adults, anyone willing to help innovate in the education market or in your own market. I work with some of the uh, leading uh, applications for educational technology in the last five to 10 years. So have some great ideas around that. If you're interested in that, we can help you with that as well. Okay, so it's a three point, it's a three, uh, three graduate extensive uh, credits that you're gonna get and based on the hours and the time you put in. And there's gonna be learning opportunities around how do you apply what we learn, uh, how do you uh, incorporate professional development, recruitment, develop, uh, leadership development, as well as organizational development and innovative strategic planning. And of course, my never take no for an answer um, ideas that I'm gonna give to you when people tell you you can't do that. We got, we got an answer for them. All right, some of our modules will include, the uh, first one, of course, will be uh, introduction to the class, and we'll talk about the class project some more. I want you to delve into some ideas about your project. Then we'll look at some of the attributes of 21st century innovative leaders and look at some case studies and discussions. Uh, then we'll start looking at vision and culture. How do you develop an innovative culture in your organization and reimagine, reinvent education or your business from top to bottom. And we'll talk about fearless and fearful innovative leadership because some people won't take that step into the deep end. We're going to show you how to do that because there, where there's no risk, there is no reward. All right, and the Magellan Effect. Curious, curiosity, inquisitiveness. <laughs> I wrote that so I can't even say it. And it's how do you explore in this innovative leadership world? All right, innovative leadership and, and project delivery will be out. Capstone, main, um, final result. And I'm going to look at inviting people to our class like John Couch here in the middle, John Couch in the middle, and Tim Cook. I reached out to them already to see if we can get them to come and do an interview with us or participate in some way. I know it's a big ask, but in innovative leadership, we never take no for an answer. <laughs> All right, and then uh, I've also reached out to Richard Collada, who's former Obama Director of Office of uh, Education Technology and CEO of ISTE. Also Sal Khan, I guess you, you guys know him. Uh, we reached out to him as well. Uh, Billy Blanks, the Tybo program creator, and Sir Ken Robinson, one of my good friends and doing great uh, work throughout the world. 
Uh, also, the FCC Commissioner Jessica, Jessica Rosenwasser, who has been very instrumental in the homework gap, homework gap issues that affect our country and broadband uh, connectivity that students don't have, as well as Common and, and others. So we have some suggested readings, of course, that are very, very easy, easy reads, won't take a lot of your time, but we want you to have some of that information. And this is the most important thing, the capstone projects. I want you to think about what will I do as an innovative leader? I'm a new superintendent. I'm a new principal. I'm a new business leader. How am I going to put together a 100 day plan to help build innovative leadership in my class, uh, er, around my uh, organization? How about the creation of an action plan to uh, incorporate trust, innovation, and collaboration in your organization, in your startup? And uh, another one, number three, is uh, problem solving, action planning. How do we look at the problems that are affecting us and how we change those? And then reimagining and transforming education for a new normal during and after this pandemic. And I apologize for the typo there. Uh, and then uh, the other one, 21st century applications and software that are not yet invented, but should be. I want to delve into that. Using TikTok, YouTube, social media. I want to see some people dancing out there and having fun as they innovate too. Have fun in your organization. It's okay to do that. Uh, and then participates. Uh, uh, participants will have an opportunity to choose a project, project of their course or choice, of course. The grades, what are, what are grades? I mean, come on, everybody's going to pass this course. They're going to turn in everything and they're going to have a great capstone project. So no worries there. And moving along, uh, one more video for you that I think this cap encapsulates what we did. And I'm going to share that with you now. As superintendent of the Coachella Valley Unified School District, I am honored to serve some of the poorest of the poor in our nation. 97% of our students are Hispanic and 90% receive free and reduced lunch. And of the small number of students that pursue college, only 16% graduate. Surely, something needed to change. And that change is taking place. We are transforming our district to a one-to-one, 24-7 -one, mobile learning environment. Using Apple Technologies products and services, our goal is to prepare all students for college, career, and citizenship by providing 18,000 iPads for 18,000 students. In April, we traveled to Cupertino. Immediately, we knew that Apple possessed the right approach, the right products, and the right services. In May, we held Transformation Day to chart our path forward. In July, we qualified Measure X, a general obligation bond. In August, we began an ambitious iPad pilot program by placing 5,600 iPads in the hands of our students with 120 teachers using iPads and MacBook Pros like pros. By utilizing Apple technologies and applications like Keynote, Pages, iMovie, and GarageBand, yes. our data indicated that the pilot program students were more engaged and more excited than ever about their learning. And most importantly, these students are doing better academically and socially. So we are happy to announce that in November, our voters passed Measure X with 67% of the vote. Therefore, our journey continues with Apple products and services at the core of the Common Core. Now, a new and true 21st century teaching and learning environment is possible because we now understand the need to marry technology, content, and pedagogy to ensure that learning is the focus, not memory. Together, we are now paving the way by utilizing iPads and challenge-based learning to transform the way we communicate, create, think, and collaborate. Some say think outside the box. We say there is no box. The question was, what kind of world do you want? The answer is, a world where hope plus equity plus apples leads to a better day and a better way. All right, all right. So anyway, that was a, a, a video that I put together back in 2012, 2011, 2012, before uh, EdTech really took off. And it was because this, this community wanted change. They were ready to innovate. They were ready to put forth their resources. So I, too, want you to be able to put a video together like this when you go in and change your community, change your organization, change your company. And so I wanted to share that with you because uh, it really was a momentous moment when one of the poorest communities in America, one of the poorest school districts in America, was able to help guide and lead forward uh, in this educational transformation that we're all undertaking now. So I'll leave it up to questions. This is what the class is going to bring you, and this is what I wanted to share with you today. I'll open it up for any questions that you may have. All right, uh, looking at the chat box. Uh, let's see, the, the new ways to connect with the community. All right, there's some, uh, any questions for anyone? I see people responding. Elena, can you see those, those uh, comments? I can see the comments, just waiting okay. for the questions to come through. 
And this could be a, a question to Dr. Adams or mm -hmm. about the certificate program in general. Come on, I know this has to be a question or two. I mean, uh, unless everybody's just going to sign up, let's do it. That sounds good too. <laughs> that sounds good too. Okay, well, you can always email me. My information is right here. And um, it's Dr. Daryl Adams. I'm online all the time. And uh, my phone number is 912-9145. I'm on Twitter at Dr. Adams TV, LinkedIn at Dr. Daryl Adams, Facebook, same, and Instagram, Daryl Adams. And there's my email, Dr. Daryl S. Adams. If you have any questions about the class, please let me know. Atlanta's available, and I think it's other contact information that you've been given. We'd love to have you come and be a part of this great opportunity. Let's change the world. Let's do something different, innovative, and we have lots of opportunity to do it because we have a lot of challenges right now. So I look forward to having you guys um, participate, and I will leave it with this quote. Keep on keeping on, and when you reach the top of the mountain, find another mountain. Daryl, there's a, I see there are a few questions coming through on the chat. Um, someone asked how many sessions are there. Um, there's currently um, one session with um, Dr. Adams. It's a six week course beginning on May 18th. And the cost, I have included the link for our Ed Innovation Certificate link. So if you click on that or copy and paste that into your browser, it has all of the information about Dr. Adams' course and also our other courses offered in the certificate program. So that includes the dates, the costs. And Daryl, I would like to say, you know, I really appreciated your presentation. I love the statement, there is no box. Think out of the box, there is no box. That's when it right. comes to education, when it comes to advancing mm -hmm. students um, in the 21st century, there can't be any limitations. We should just be right. out there coming, out, coming up with all of the creative mm -hmm. ideas that we can yes. and um, just making it happen. <laughs> Yeah, just make it happen. You know, the world needs uh, innovative leadership now more than ever. And uh, hopefully participants uh, in this class and others, we're all going to work together to make, uh, to make the changes necessary. So I look forward to having some of you in the class and uh, share the information uh, far and wide. And we appreciate uh, the opportunity to work with, uh, with you, Alana and, and Lisa and the university and the Jacob Institutes for Innovation in Education. Um, Dr. Adams, there's another question that came yeah. through. It says, are, pr are sessions pre-recorded or on demand, and what time are the sessions? Do you, I know you mentioned about the asynchronous model. Do you want to share yeah. what that might look like? Yes. Well, basically, I'm looking at uh, starting on the 18th, on a Monday, and just um, probably from that time between 4 and 7 Pacific time. And then, of course, we'll have everything recorded, so you can also, um, you know, at your own leisure and time, also participate in the class. So. We'll have an every Monday kind of um, uh, class where, where we're all together. And then if you can't be, the, the class will be recorded so you can uh, participate that way as well. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> well, if you have any more questions, feel free to follow that link. Um, we have our recruiter information, Carly Wilson, where you can contact her directly to, to speak with her about the courses. And again, thank you, Daryl. We appreciated your high energy presentation. I want to sign up today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you all so much and stay safe. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. Bye.